right, ladies and gentlemen. It came to that time where we're going to have to remove the uh, transmission mount. So first things first, let's remove the battery, and then we're going to go ahead and remove the intake. Once you remove both um, 10 millimeter uh, bolt from the terminals, we're going to go ahead and remove that bolt right there. You're going to need a 12 millimeter socket to remove that one, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right, once you remove the 12 millimeter bolt, we're going to go ahead and remove the harness. And this is what prevents you from moving the uh, battery. So let's go ahead and remove that battery. Now moving forward, let's go ahead and unhinge these clips right here. There's one, two, three, there's a fourth over there. Uh, just look around your intake manifold and see if you'll find them, okay? They're all around. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this clip over here and then we're just gonna lift this up. And don't forget to unplug this here as well. So let me do that now. So once you remove the clips that are on the side and you loosen this bolt here, you can just use a 10 millimeter socket instead of that Phillips head. Then you're gonna go ahead and take out the white pin that's underneath right here and unplug it. The last Now, after you've done that, let's go ahead and remove one, two, and three. Very easy to do and then just take this unit out. Now you have a lot of space to remove this and then you can work on this area right here. Okay, once you remove these three screws, just pop it up and then you're done. You can put this to the side right next to your battery. Just don't lose these screws that you have there. And then we're gonna remove this. All you gotta do is just lift it up. Just give me a second because I'm gonna need both hands. To the side and then we're gonna be able to take out the air filter. Once you remove the air, air filter, this has been there for more than a year. Normally, I change it every April, May, but this year I have not. So you're looking at one year old. It's not that bad. Let me just put this in the side along with the other ones. These are all the stuff that I'm using. I'm putting it all in one area. All right, with this out of the way, let's go ahead and remove that screw right here. Once you remove that bolt right there, we're gonna go ahead now and start working with the ECU. To remove this, it's quite simple. Take a tweezer and just pinch this side right here. And as you're pinching with a pair of pliers, pull it from this direction. Right now I can't because this needs to be pinched in. Same goes with this. I need both hands, so let me get started now. All right, I'm gonna try to do this on camera. All you gotta do is just pinch this with a pair of pliers, squeeze it in, and then pull out. All right, so once you remove this little tab right here, we're gonna go ahead and lift this dark gray component that way. But in order for this to move, which right now won't be able to, you're gonna stick your finger right here and there's a groove. You can stick your thumb. Stick your thumb and then move this forward. It's that little tab right there. You need to press this inwards for this to be pushed back. And that's about it. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's fully closed. I mean, fully to your left. And then once that's pushed back, you can tell because once it's closed, you're gonna see that green tab right here. That means it's closed. And when it's open, it goes over here. There you go. That's all you need to do. And then do the same thing on this side. It's closed right now. I already pushed this one back. Take your finger. Stick it in the middle right here. There you go. Make sure you're gonna see a green tab right there. Once you see that little green tab right here, that means this is safe to be pulled up. And that's how you remove your ECU. All right, now we're almost done taking this out. Once you remove these two, go ahead and remove that bolt right there. That one right there, it's a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and remove it and then you're able to lift this up. All right, so you're probably reaching that point where you're gonna have to jack up the car or at least jack up your transmission in order for you to take out the mount. Now in my case, because my car is dropped, I can't just put this jack, even though it's low profile, I can't go under all the way towards the transmission to, to just keep it leveled. So what I had to do is go to my trunk and take the uh, factory um, donut jack stand that you have in the trunk. Every car has one. You can use that for your transmission if you don't have one of these. However, my case, 
I'm, I had to jack up the car, take out that wheel, and then put this one right under it. So now the car is being held here. Then I need to confirm if my engine, my car is leveled because you wanna make sure your car is level. So when you raise that transmission, it's also leveled. Cause then if not, you're gonna ruin the uh, bolts and the screws and you might ruin the groove. So right now I'm gonna see if this is centered right here. It looks to be centered, yes. All right, so now I know the car is centered. Now I'm gonna go ahead Put the uh, jack under this blue one. I'm gonna put it under the tra transmission, but I need a piece of plywood. And a piece of plywood is right here. So let me get to it. All right, there we go. It is now safe and secure. Now let me go ahead and start removing those bolts. All right, once your transmission is supported, let's go ahead and remove the battery tray. It is four screws here. It's 12 millimeter bolts, these four, and then this one right here is a 10 millimeter. And then once you remove those bolts, let's go ahead and remove this tray. All right, so once you have the battery moved to the side, you got that out of the way, let's take a look at that transmission mount. Now this transmission mount, you're gonna remove it and there's about four to five screws that you're gonna have to remove and I'm already looking at it. How, how can I tell? Just by looking at the brand new one. You wanna make sure when you're gonna replace it, look at the one that you received, the new one, and make sure it's compatible with the old one. So I see a hole here. Now again, these are uh, 15 millimeters uh, bolts. One, two, three, four. This guy right here, that is a 17 millimeter that you're gonna have to uh, use and I prefer you get a 17 millimeter short socket. That's the space that you'll need. And I also wanna add that this one right here, one, two, when you remove these, take this metal bracket and just transfer it over to this side right here. All right, so I was able to loosen this to one. realize in order to get to this one right here and the one over here, right underneath, let's see if I can zoom in. Right there, not this one, not this one, that one. In order to get that, I have to remove this. I have to remove this bracket that you see here. This whole thing needs to be removed in order for me to get here. So I'm gonna have to loosen these, which I already did. I gotta loosen this one if I could reach. If not, I'm gonna have to loosen this guy, this guy, start removing this. So once I remove this, I can lift this up you know what, I won't be able to lift it up because of this right here. Go ahead and remove this bolt and that bolt right here. I already have them both loose in it. In order for me to do so, I had to use WD-40 because it was very rusty. And once you remove those two screws, you're gonna go ahead and remove this one and that one right there. Let's do so now. All right, time to take that bad boy out now. All right, once you get a good groove, apply a lot of pressure going that direction and then just pray for the best. This is gonna take a while, it's a long thread. So I'm just going to pause it and continue doing this until it comes out. All right, and then just twist and then pull it out. All right, so once I pull this out, now I know this is loose. Again, I just pulled this one. I had to deal with that one. But now that I removed this, I'm gonna go ahead, remove this bolt and this bolt. Cause all, all I really did was just loosen them. Now that I, I can just pull them out, I can remove this harness here so I can get to that bolt that's right there. See that one, I had to do the same with this one. I gotta remove this plate here just to get to that bolt there so let me do that now all right so i went ahead and loosened all the bolts for this now this is very loose and now that it's loose i can actually lift it and bring them more closer to that direction so i have space now to start removing this bolt right there now in order to remove that bolt you're going to need a 15 millimeter socket and make sure it's short because you don't have enough space but it does work all right, so let me do that now. 
And then once you're done removing that screw, which I'm almost done, I've loosened it already, I gotta go ahead and then remove that one. So you're gonna take this plate and just move it as close as possible to your far left so you can go ahead and remove that screw. Okay, if you come to that point where you are having a hard time removing that bolt, again, get a short socket. Don't try to move it from this angle. Get under your circuit box. And from right here, whoops, right there. Hold on, let's see if you can see it. Perfect. Okay. And then from right here, you're set. And then from there, just apply pressure. Make sure that you're moving it that direction. So take the handle and just apply pressure this way. All right. All right. And that's it. Now, the last bolt is that one right there. And that's going to give me some problems just because this big guy is in the way. Look at the space that I have to play with. All right, so I just want to put tension on this bolt right here. I just finally was able to loosen it, but I tell you, it is a pain. This one right here. The reason is because of this bracket right here. This, let's see if I can zoom in better. There. This metal bracket prevents anything, and especially this area right here. This is the only space you have. Um, so if you are loosening this one right here, see, it's coming out now. If you're having problems with this one, highly suggest from this angle, from this angle you see me in, this is the way, the best way to use one of these to take that out. Do not go from this side right here because you're going to strip it. Let's look closely. I was stripping the hell out of it. See that? So I advise you guys to not go from this angle. Get a good angle from this way. All right. So let me just continue taking it off. Look at this. I just want to show you how much I was stripping the hell out of it. It was bad. I was afraid I was going to strip it so much I wouldn't be able to take it out. But the way I showed you guys that angle, that's the best angle to take this out. All right. Let's proceed. Remove. This is old. Carefully remove it. Garbage. It's done. There we go. That's the old one. I do have to take these two bolts out and remove this to the new one. Check that out. The old one. Crazy. so once you start putting all the bolts in again this mount has four bolts let me see zoom in better there you go and then the remaining the ones on the bracket has four as well two here and two on the other side again everything is being worked reverse order make sure you have this bracket back in now in order to put the last one that goes through here you're gonna have to raise this a bit raise it up so then you can have an eye level and put the bolt in that's all you have to do and then put everything back and then you're done. All right, so I want to show you this part right here. I'm using my blue jack stand to hold the transmission on that side. But then I have this jack stand from the car. Every car has one, it's like a donut. Uh, it's to, to install the donut when you have a flat tire. Well, I'm using that and I'm holding it right there in that position. I have a piece of wooden block there to raise it properly. So I'm almost done, let me show you to align it see i can't fit this in because it was too low from the damaged old transmission mount all right there you go i was able to align it and then i just got to put this in in there bolt it up and i'm good to go
Well, there you go. There goes the new transmission mount. Now I'm putting everything back together again. Um, if I were to rate this project, I would say it's in difficulty. I would say it's a nine or eight just because you need a jack stand to hold that transmission. And then when you're putting the new one, you're going to have to align it properly in order to fit that rod in there. And that was quite hard for me, but it took some time, some wiggle room, and then I just put it in there. All right. All right, everyone. Hopefully this video was useful and I'll catch you guys on the next one.